Okay, we'll start with a familiar passage this morning, Mark 16, 15. As we continue our series on about the subject, what's next? Different steps that every believer needs to take. So Mark 16, 15. This is a simple lesson. But there's a lot to it, so we'll see how far we get. This is... Uh, Mark 16, 15, let's start with uh, reading that. It says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So the title lesson is Tell Others. That's one thing that every Christian should do, is tell other people about Christ. And let me just ask you, how often do you do that? How well do you do that? How much do you do that? Because we're supposed to engage in that. If, if the last time you gave, if you can't remember the last time you gave out a gospel tract, that's not a good sign. Uh, especially at this time of the year. I mean, this season, it's easy to give out tracts, Christmas tracts, uh, because people are, are a little bit more warm and fuzzy about uh, the Christmas season. They'll talk more about Jesus this year, this time of year than any other time of year. So we really ought to be. We have no excuse, and we really ought to have this, this joy and this, this desire to tell other people about Christ. So I, I want to encourage everyone that if you don't have a burden, develop a burden for the Lord and uh, be active. Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, and we ask that as we go through it, uh, Lord, that the, the needs of others are so tremendous. I pray that you burden our hearts for that this morning through your word. And it's good for us to be in church today. It's good for us to be reminded of uh, this important topic. We pray all this now in Christ's name. Amen. Well, we're familiar with the, with the saying, uh, good news travels fast. Sometimes it seems like bad news travels faster. But good news does travel fast. The word gospel means good news. That should be news that travels quickly, that we should be happy about getting uh, the word out. When someone truly gets saved, they want to tell some, someone else about it. What, you think back when you first got saved, if, you're, if you are saved, <laughs> um, and, and the excitement that you had and you wanted to tell other people about it, it's, it's kind of natural. But it's, it's uh, sad when we get over the joy of our salvation. We get over the fact that, yeah, I'm saved. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess yeah, it's, it's a good thing to be saved. And we have what other people need. And we should be excited about getting that news to other people. If, you're, if you've been born again, if your sins have been washed away, you have what millions in this world are seeking today. They're seeking peace, they're seeking joy, they're seeking contentment. You got that when you got saved. You got forgiveness of sins when you got saved. You have a peace that you're not, uh, that, that you're not gonna go to hell, you're gonna go to heaven. You have joy. The Holy Spirit came in you when you got saved and gave you joy. Now I understand that since then you, uh, you and I battle with this thing called the flesh. We talked about that a couple weeks back. And so we have a battle that we, we deal with, but salvation gives us so much, and the world is out there trying to, to find this kind of happiness, and we've, we have what they need, and we should be telling other people about it. And... Romans 1.16 says, for I am not ashamed, this is our, how our attitude should be, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. We shouldn't be a secret Christian. People shouldn't be surprised to find out, oh, you're saved? <laughs> it, it, it should go more than just, oh, you go to that church? It shouldn't be about our church. It should be about Jesus. Now, 
of course we would like people to come to our church, but the thing that they need is Jesus Christ as their savior. He's going to change their life. Walking into this, this building, sitting down amongst other people here is not going to change someone else's life. But introducing them to the one who can change your life is what it's all about. So what has God done for you? Uh, I think you would say he's done a lot for you. Well, then I think it's also helpful if we uh, are willing to tell others because we know that what he's done for us, he wants to do for other people. So a few points here. We'll see how far we get. This is the last Sunday school class of the calendar year. Uh, so I don't know that we're going to. I wanted to finish the series up this, this year, but we'll see. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, so we're going to look at a couple things. Number one is why should we tell others? So there's a whole bunch of reasons. And so when I ask these questions and I try to give you answers from the scripture, it doesn't mean I'm giving you all the answers. It's, it's a Sunday school lesson. <laughs> these topics we can take a long time to teach about. But... <clears throat> Maybe you've never stopped to think about why you should tell others. As I mentioned before, it's kind of a natural thing. When someone gets saved, they want someone else to know. If you love somebody, you want them to have the same uh, love, peace, joy, and all that that you have. If you have found the way to have forgiveness of sins and the, 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 the guilt of your sin debt removed from you, if you care about someone, you just would want to tell them about that. So here's a, here's a few reasons. First of all, telling others demonstrates a love for the Lord. It demonstrates a love for the Lord. So when you know, a young person falls in love, say a, lady, a young lady falls in love with a man, the man of her dreams, and then she gets the ring, right? She gets uh, engaged. She'll walk around, hi, how you doing? She wants everyone to see her ring. She wants everyone to know uh, about, you know, the, the love of her life. She wants, she wants to talk ab about him. And it's natural for us to, to, to tell other people about people that, we're cons that we love and concerned about, right? Many of us have, it used to be, you'd have a wallet and you'd have a family picture in the wallet and you'd pull out your wallet and you'd show, hey, this is my family, you know? <laughs> now it's, you just open up your phone. Yeah, this is my family. And then you could show like a whole, f f you know, photo shoot and the whole family album there. And people are like, I've seen a picture. I don't need to see all the pictures, <laughs> you know? I can only take so much, right? Uh, but you're, you're excited about the people you love and you want to share that with other people. Well, if, if, you, if you and I have a, a love for the Lord and he's done so much for us and I love him, I should want to share that with others. And if I'm not sharing that with, with others, maybe I'm not as close to the Lord as I should be. That's, that's the only deduction I can come to. Uh, <clears throat> do people know that you love Jesus? That's a good question. Do they know it? 1 Corinthians 8, 3 says, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. So is it known of you that you love God? You love the Lord Jesus Christ? It should be. And the only way they're going to know that is if you open your mouth and talk about him. And it would be terrible, right, for a man to be ashamed of his wife, uh, but even more so it's terrible if we're embarrassed about being a Christian. You know, at work, when they're talking about they're bashing Christians, or they're talking about, you know, the, all these people, and, and they're describing Christians, and, and you just sit silent. Don't be embarrassed about your testimony for the Lord. In fact, 2 Timothy 1.8 says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. So we should let our love for the Lord be known. And that's one reason we should tell others. Let me give you another one. And this one's got several subpoints if you have a handout. So the second one is this. Uh, telling others helps those in need. Despite the facade that people put on, 
around the globe, uh, the majority of people in this world are not really happy. They're miserable on the inside. And the reason is because they don't have Jesus Christ as their Savior. They don't have forgiveness of sins. They don't have the, the love and the joy and the peace that he offers. So without Christ, they, they're missing so much. Now, is there some pleasure in sin? The Bible says there is pleasure in sin for a season. So people go out and, and they do the things that they do and they come back and talk about all the, the horrible, wicked things that they've done. And they, tell, they talk about it with a smile on their face. That's the only pleasure they're going to have. And it's fleeting. And they've got to go out and spend a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of time trying to find the next fix. And it, it, it never satisfies and it doesn't do anything for their soul, it just gives them a temporary uh, feeling of, of happiness. But we don't have to wonder and, and, <clears throat> and think what people are like out there. So when you go to witness to somebody, you're saying, well, I don't know if they really want this. They might not want the Lord, but they need the Lord. And you say, well, they look happy without him doesn't matter what they look like. Let's see what the Bible says about the unsaved and see what they're really like. And when we can get a, a glimpse of what they're really like, maybe it would motivate us to witness to them a little bit more. So a couple thoughts here. First one is they have gone astray. All right, Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, talk about Jesus, the iniquity of us all. So they've gone astray. No, they might not know that they've gone astray, but when you go astray, you're, you're far off. You're out there. You're not where you ought to be. And it's a dangerous place to be where, um, when, when you're not where you should be, you get yourself in a lot more trouble. And there's less security out there too. You know, when, when you know where you're, you're supposed to be somewhere and you're there, there's a lot more comfort and, and, and uh, peace about that. They've gone astray. In other words, they've strayed from the Lord. It's amazing how some people can talk about God and talk about the Bible and they live like the devil. And you're like, how did, where, where did you come up with this? What, what kind of Christianity do you have? Because it's not, I don't see it in the Bible. Um, but they've gone astray. And so when you're far from God, you're far from his blessings, you're far from his peace. So you know that about them. You know that when you, you witness to someone who doesn't know Christ as their savior, that they're, they're far from God and they're missing out on all the good things that you have and the things that they probably long for in their heart, but are, are going to escape it because they're not seeking him the right way. Let me give you another one. They are without hope. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 12, that at that time ye were without Christ. Okay, so this is, this is a description of people who are without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So, People who have no hope are people who are without God. People have no hope. They have no hope of eternity. They have no hope of a changed life. They can try to fix things themselves, but you and I all know we can't fix it. We're good at breaking things. We're good at straying from the Lord, but we're not real good at putting things back together. Say, well, I'm a self-made man. Well probably not made really well then, because we can't fix what we break. You, you can't mend all those situations that you, you tore up with your sin. <clears throat> and so uh, the way to do that is to come to the Lord, and of course he gives us instructions on how to put things back together, doesn't he? Uh, broken marriages, broken homes, you know, uh, bad relationships with, with, with children, all these things, 
you can't really fix on your own, but God's given us his principles on how to work through these things, and if we would follow them, they, they help. But they are without hope. It says having no hope, no hope of eternal life, no hope of forgiveness of sins. And so we know, despite the big smile, the beaming smile, and they got, everything's okay, despite their social media pages where they've got the greatest life in the world and you're a big loser because you don't have all that they have. And you're just convinced that, wow, they, they're not going to need God. But they do need God because they have no hope. Another thing is uh, that they are guilty. They carry guilt. Now, there's a difference between feeling guilt and being guilty, right? Uh, they are guilty. Some of them know it, and they carry that guilt. Um, some don't feel it like they should, but the Scripture says in James 2.10, for whosoever, that means anybody, shall keep the whole law, okay, they're really trying to do what's right, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So one, breaking any, any one of those commandments that God has given, just, just one of them, makes you guilty of breaking them all. The best that you can offer to God isn't so good. And I, you and I have nothing to offer the Lord in of ourselves. We find our worth in Christ. He's the one that changes us. He's the one that helps us. And so you know that about people, that they are, of course, they're gone astray, they're without hope, and they are guilty. Now, trying to show them from the scriptures what, you know, that, that they are guilty sometimes can be a challenge, right? But that's, uh, it, it's, it's, if you go uh, to, the, to the list of the Ten Commandments and walk through them with people, that will help people to see what God expects, all right? You just kind of go through. You ever told a lie? Thou shalt not bear false witness. You ever steal? <laughs> you know, thou shalt not steal. And all, right down the line, it's not that difficult to get people to see. Sometimes when I'm witnessing to people, I say, so um, can you name a couple of sins to me? What, what does God consider sin? And they might say some things. <laughs> and oftentimes, uh, they'll even say the things that they're guilty about. And you're not looking for a confession, but, uh, but that's what's fresh on their mind. So they, they have uh, guilt. Another one is that they have no peace. We know that because the Bible says in Isaiah 48, 22, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. There's no peace. Despite how happy they look inside, you know they are empty. You know they're, and it usually comes out. You just watch them for a little bit. It'll come out with their dealings with their fellow man, their frustrations, their, 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 their anger, their bitterness, and they have no peace. And we know the Prince of Peace. And he came, right? And this is the great time. Say, so, hey, it's a little something about the Lord Jesus Christ. He, can, he, he, he is the Prince of Peace. And then also number uh, five on my list here, uh, they are in darkness. Luke 1, says, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. It's amazing that people love darkness. Some people just want to be sad and depressed. They'll go sit in a dark room. People love darkness. Most uh, taverns aren't really well lit. A lot of places of ill repute are not uh, beaming with uh, 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 bright lights. It, it, it might be dim with a spotlight on somebody, but as far as, it, they like darkness. A lot of crime happens at night. It's just people are prone to it. And it's not a good place to be in darkness. The Bible says that we can give light to them that sit in darkness and, and in the shadow of death. And it goes into that idea of peace again, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And so the gospel helps people who are in darkness. Then we can see that they're condemned. He that believeth 
on him is not condemned. So a person who's trusted Christ, they're not condemned. But a people, p- people who are, have not trusted him are condemned. Right now, they are condemned. There's nothing they have to do to go to hell except to die. That's it. They're heading there because of their sin debt. It's not forgiven. They're a breath away from eternity in hell and the lake of fire. It says, and, but he that believeth not is condemned already. And that's the point. They haven't trusted Christ. So they are already condemned because he hath not believed in the name of the Son, only begotten Son of God. So they're condemned. Put names to, to these things. The people that we love, our relatives, neighbors, friends, coworkers, whatever it is. These are people, they are condemned. Do they necessarily see it and know it? No. And that's what it can be challenging at times to, to try to talk to people about salvation because you've got to get them lost. And most people don't want to talk about how bad they are. And it takes love, kindness, compassion, concern to bring uh, the matter up in a tactful way. But it's not loving if we neglect to tell people that we care about, and even strangers, about the Lord. So they're condemned. Next, they are spiritually dead. Ephesians 2, 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now, I know we're just giving a, a short lesson on witnessing, soul winning, and all that. You, we, we, we've got a whole course, whole books have been written on these things, so we can't go into everything in too great detail, but they're spiritually dead. You hath he quickened. Okay, he's talking to save people. He says, you have been quickened, made, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And so the people who haven't been saved are still dead. And what kills people spiritually is their trespasses and sins. It brings death. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. There's no spiritual life in them. They might be physically alive, but their soul is dead. But praise the Lord that when we receive Christ as our Savior, we are passed from death unto life. I already have eternal life. I have it right now. I'm not in heaven yet, I know that. But I have eternal life. I have newness of life. The Lord changed my life. And that's what we get at salvation. It's not just about going to heaven. It's about having new life. I have a new relationship. I have a relationship with him. He helps me get through this life. And then, on top of that, I get to be with him in the next life. So it's not just about where you're going to go when you die. That's part of it. But the bigger deal is that we are alive spiritually and new. Newness of life. Another uh, word that we use often here, in this, uh, we'll read it in the verse, the next description about them, the needs that they have, is that they're lost. They're lost. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So Jesus came to seek lost people. It's interesting that when you're lost out on a hike, uh, sometimes you know it. Sometimes you don't know it, but eventually you will know it when you're trying to get back to where you came from and you realize, I have no idea. You're walking back and you said, did I come from that left path or did I come from that right path? And you're guessing. I think that looks familiar. And then you take that one and this doesn't look familiar. So you double back and you're like, then you come to another fork and you have no clue. And now as the nightfall is coming and panic starts setting in. It, it's more, it's, you accept help better when you realize you're lost. But when you're just cruising on down and you think everything goes okay and says, hey, can I help you? No, I, I'm fine, I got it, I got it. You know, it's, it's like that driving on the road, right? Now you just pull, up, pull open your phone and just instant GPS. You can get anywhere you need to go. Uh, let those satellites go out and then you, 
the panic comes in if you don't have a road atlas. Some people are like, what's an atlas? But they're lost. They're lost. They need to be found. And that's our job. That's why we, we should emulate the Lord. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. We should be seeking lost people and trying to introduce them to the Savior and help them find their way. And as you go out, the more you sow the seed, the more doors you knock on, the more tracks you pass out, the more you engage in conversations with people, you will find some people who will readily admit, yeah, I need help. And those are the ones you probably find uh, that you have a better chance of helping them get saved. The other people who think that they need no help. It's hard to help people who don't want help. But doesn't mean we still, uh, we don't try. We still go out and we still look for people and we, st and we still make that effort. And as the, the more you sow, the greater chance you have of reaping. You sow little, you're gonna reap little. If you, if you give one tract out a year, <laughs> you know, don't expect that uh, you're going to find some, you know, 100 people getting saved. <laughs> anyway, next one. They're blind. They're blind. This is 2 Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world, as the devil, uh, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine under them. So God wants to shine and brighten the lives of every person in the world. He wants to illuminate their understanding. He wants them to see, wow, you know, have the, the light bulb moment where the light bulb comes on. Wow, that's what the Bible says. That's what God's talking about. This is why this is important. But there's also the God of this world, small letter G, the devil who runs this world system, which was a couple weeks ago a lesson, that he wants people to remain in darkness. He doesn't want them to come to the light. He doesn't want them to have a good life. He doesn't want them to be brightened. He wants them to, 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 to be spiritually dead and lacking understanding. He wants, them, he wants all of us to be miserable. And so they're blind, they can't see. Praise the Lord. The word of God can help people uh, see the truth. Then the last one underneath this idea of telling, other, uh, telling others helps those in need is that they are destined for eternal punishment. The Bible says in uh, Revelation 20, verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There is a place called hell. It's where souls go that are not saved. Then uh, after that, all of those people in hell will get out to stand before God at the great white throne judgment. And then they'll go into a, an eternal fire called the lake of fire. That's eternal punishment. That's what awaits our friends, our neighbors, our relatives, our coworkers, those people who we even don't know who don't have Christ. And that's why it's so important that we do tell them. Let me try to wrap this up here. A uh, couple things. So we got through that list. So telling others, why should we tell others? It demonstrates a love for God. It, it, telling others helps those in need. Uh, thirdly there, telling others is the business God told us to be involved in, right? Uh, Jesus taught the word of God in the temple when he was 12 years old, and his, uh, and, and his mother came and, and asked him why he tarried in Jerusalem. He says, well, how is it that you sought me? Wished you not that I must be about my father's business? This is my father's business. I need to be telling people about him. And that is still the Father's business. If you're born again, you have God as your heavenly Father. That's his business. We should be about our Father's business, and that's telling people about the Lord. And I'm gonna challenge you, that before you leave, if you don't have any tracks, grab a few down at the other building, get a few tracks and determine to pass them out this week. Christ's uh, goal 
in life was to be about his father's business and that ought to be ours also. And it is ours because Jesus told us, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Then telling others brings joy. Now, if you want to be happy, happy is one thing, but joy is a deep sense of, of, of uh, well-being. Uh, but when you search the scriptures, you see there's an abundance of joy accompanied uh, with the salvation of sinners. For instance, uh, John 15, 11, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy uh, might be full. And that is because we're telling others about the Lord. And if our joy is not full, we should be busy telling people about him. Then telling others manifests uh, the presence of God in your life. Jesus said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, and lo, I am with you always. I like that. So if I'm going to go out and tell other people about the Lord, he's with me. I'm guaranteed of his presence. If I'm prayed up, I've confessed my sins, he is with me. Now I guess we can be fearful sometimes, can't we, about passing out tracts or whatever. But we don't, or witnessing, we don't have to be. I was, uh, Thursday night, I, I ran to Walmart. I don't ever go to Walmart on a Thursday night, but I had to go to Walmart. And uh, I was still in my shirt and tie, and I walk in, I'm walking down the main aisle there, and I just made eye contact with a guy. I, I don't know, I've never met him in my life. He just looked at me, and I looked at him. We smiled. He says, hey, how you doing? And I said, good, you know. And uh, I'm not this outgoing personality type, you know. There's some people who can talk to a wall and have a conversation with them. And, you know, it was just caught each other. He says, hey, I like your tie. I said, thanks. He said, you just come from the bank or work or something? I said, no, I said, just from church. And then it's a perfect opportunity. Reached in. Hey, you know, had my Christmas tract. Was able to get, he was all happy to get it. And uh, it doesn't have to be a frightening thing. We can just try to walk with the Lord and let him use us, and it can be natural. Amen? And it, uh, I'm just giving you the blanks here. Telling others earns eternal rewards, right? The fields are white under harvest. Anyway, I won't read all this. And then telling others pleases God. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. God gets happy when people get saved. And you don't know what people are going through. You leave them with a gospel tract or you get an opportunity to, to witness to them at their door or whatever. God can take that and keep working in their heart. And so you just keep at it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness. And I pray that we'll be faithful to you in trying to give out your word and use us, Lord, and help us to determine to... Um, be available for your direction in that way. We pray this in Christ's name, amen.